So imagine we have had a set of data that we have extracted from our data store. You guys all see this, this font, right? This data set had 16 columns. We collect the information about, we extract the information about order ID, date, priority, quantity, so information about the shipping, the product that has been shipped, information about the customer. We have customer name here. We have the province or state that product has been shipped to, and some information about the product, right? These might have been extracted from multiple sources, multiple data tables or ER tables. Now we have done our job and we have put together a logical that data model already, a dimension model. And we know that our data warehouse will follow the following schema. We have a customer table that has ID and description of the customer type. Um, maybe let's say, I don't know, a wholesaler or like retailer, things like that. Priority, information about the priority, information about the province. So we have an ID and a name. And we have also a lot of information about the order, where this order has gone through, right? We have ID, day of the month, day of the week, all the information that's related to that. At the same time, we have a fact table that has the key obviously from each of these dimensions and some additional information. Let's say it has um, information about the quantity, the discount, if there was any, the unit price, unit cost, shipping delay and the cost, and then the total order and the profit from selling that separate unit. So we have already done our job. This is an example of what you have done, for instance, for your project, right? Before then deal, working with any kind of data. The first stage is, uh, the first thing we do is that we bring all that data into the staging phase, right? So we extract that data from our transaction processing systems. We don't, we don't interfere with their performance. We save it, let's say in a local storage or a cloud, that doesn't matter. We do, uh, what we need to do is that first thing first, from this table, we know that some of the information that we have extracted is going to be unnecessary based on the dimension and the fact table that we have put together. Let's say we looked at our information and we saw that there are certain columns that we don't do any kind of analysis in our data warehouse. So we can just simply remove these columns during the transformation process. Let's say order ID, order priority, the shipping mode, uh, the shipping mode, uh, the customer name, product category, product name, and the product container. We remove all of that information and through that transformation, we now come up with a smaller um, table that's more in line with the fact table, with the dimension model we have in mind. For instance, someone might be asking a question. You might be asked, why did we remove the product name? It looks like product name is important. Um, but for whatever reason, we decided that the product name is not something that we need to keep information about based on our dimensional model, or we wanna save space on this storage because it's a, it's a string data. And we usually don't do, can't do any kind of analysis on a, a string data, right? So we decided not to include it. Other question would be, why did we remove this? Why did we not remove the shipping date, right? We had the shipping date information, but if you guys look at the dimension table, there was no shipping date in our dimension, in our fact table, right? We don't have shipping table, we have a shipping delay. And shipping delay is something that can be calculated based on shipping date information. So we don't have it directly, but we need it for some sort of transformation. So we keep it. I'm just giving you guys an idea about how we are, like what's the logic behind keeping some and removing some, right? So take us to this point now, we have a smaller uh, table with lower num 
number of uh, a small table with lower number of columns. Um, now we need to do for for the sake of our analysis, we need to do some data transformation. First, we need to do handle some missing data. There are some records that need to be removed or need to be replaced based on the knowledge. Maybe we use some lookup tables, maybe we look some additional data in order either to remove the missing data or make sure we can provide some values for them if we can. Second, we wanna handle all the dimensional information that exists in our input data, but does not exist in our data warehouse. For example, maybe the input data includes customer type with the value international buyer, but for whatever reason, we do not want to have any information about international buyer. Either we wanna filter them out, or even sometimes you wanna change the categories. Let's say we have five customer types, but for the sake of our analysis, we only care about two types. So we do any kind of transformation that's needed once we are reading and transforming the customer type data, right? Anything that makes sense for your analysis. Um, and the answer could be different. Again, this is, this is a business case that's written here. And you guys can see this file. It's post, I, I posted it under your, the documents um, and the Blackboard. Or sometimes part of your analysis might include generating some fields that do not exist, but can be calculated from other fields. Let's say a field unit profit needs to be calculated from other examples or the shipping delay can be calculated from the other fields, all right? Let me see how we do it. I think we have shipping delay here. Let's say shipping delay. We don't put, keep shipping date, we don't keep order date. Well, we keep shipping delay information based on the calculation of shipping date minus order date. Or we have unit profit, which is unit profit times one minus the order discount minus the unit cost, right? So we extracted each of these, we don't report them directly in our fact table but we calculate that field during the transformation, right? This is an example of ETL. Let's see what are other changes that made to our table. We had order date, but we decided to take that dimension out and instead replace it with an order date ID. So that means that we can look up order ID in a dimension table um, and find out about the date. So column one, was replaced. We have the rest are the same shipping costs. The province, for whatever reason, for the same reason, we take the province name out. Because again, if we keep the provinces, it also, it's a lot harder for our servers to process a string data compared to numerical values. I would say the majority of the data we keep in our data warehouse should be numeric because that's how we can run any sort of analytics. It's really hard to do it if we have a lot of a string data. So we had to take the province out, we create a lookup table and we replace it by province ID, right? So row column seven is now replaced. Uh, sorry, column seven is uh, replaced. Um, same thing we did with customer type, we changed it with customer type ID. We had the shipping date and now we have shipping delay. Shipping delay is a new column. So we replaced shipping date because we didn't care about the shipping date but we wanted to know, we wanted to know how well we're handling these transactions where we replaced it with shipping delay. And for the same purpose, we, in the same way we calculated order total and unit profit based on a formula that, let's say the manager of um, our marketing department or our sales department ha has agreed and approved. So we do that, those, we do those transformation. So automatically once the data comes in, we see these new values being generated and stored in our database. Now the final stage is what's called as data loading. And that's the reason we use an ETL tool. This is an example of an output of an ETL tool. 
Um, this is, I think, Pentaho Kettle. I might bring an example to do it in class next week. There are so many other tools. There's DBT that's open source and it's very, becoming very popular. Um, but let me tell you what this does. So basically, this is an illustration. Remember the data flow? Let me show you that thing again. Remember we had this data flow, data integration flow. So source data coming is being transformed in multiple additional sources being called for lookup tables. So we had some certain transformations happening, right? This is the same thing that these ETL tool will, will tell us. First of all, it tells us where the source of our data is. This is one example. Next thing, we apply a filtering column. For instance, we are keeping some columns, we're discarding some columns. Next thing is doing some group by, right? This is a SQL, right? This is like simple SQL code. We're doing some group by, keep only unique values for certain procedures. And we need to do some column renaming. And in any of these, we can create the logic very easily using these ETL tools. So literally like, I don't have the output of these ETL tools. Let me show you. like, you can, for instance, in the software, I can double click on this column and it will pop and it will tell me exactly what I need to do with that, my source data. I say like, for instance, read column from one to 10, um, only keep the first five, discard the last five. 